I have two light filters in my hands. You can see that they slightly darken the image and it seems that there is nothing else that is special about them. Now let's put one light filter in front of the other and start turning it. It turns out that at a certain position the light is blocked by two light filters almost entirely. It passes through each filter but does not pass through two filters when they are in one after the other position. Let's attach sticks to the light filters to mark their axes. When the axes are parallel, there is no mutual darkening. And when the axes are perpendicular, visible light hardly passes through such an optical system. Let's make another version of this experiment. This transparent film is taken from a cell phone screen. Let's look through it at the computer screen covered with the same kind of film. Again, in a certain position of the two films, there is a noticeable attenuation of light, although not as strong as with light filters. To explain this, we will start with the fact that light is a transversely polarized electromagnetic wave. The vectors of the electric field E and the magnetic field B are perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation. We will associate the direction of wave polarization with the direction of the electric field vector. In our experiments, we use special Polaroid films. They are made in such a way that they let through the light, which is polarized along the axis of the film, and do not let through the light, which is polarized across the axis of the film. This phenomenon can be illustrated by a simple mechanical model. A spring is passed through a grid of two parallel rods. We will swing one end of the spring parallel to the rods. Such waves do pass through the grid. But if the spring is swung at 90 degrees to the grid, the same kind of waves will no longer pass through it. The first film in our experiment is called a polarizer. The polarizer lets through the light whose electric field is oriented along the selected direction. Let's put another film in the way of this light, turning it at an angle alpha relative to the first film. This film is called an analyzer. It decomposes the electric field of the light wave into two components. A longitudinal one with an amplitude of E cosine alpha and a perpendicular one with an amplitude of E sine alpha. The longitudinal component passes through the analyzer, but the perpendicular component does not. The light intensity is proportional to the square of the electric field, hence it depends on the angle alpha according to the law, I equals I0 multiplied by squared cosine alpha. This relation is called Malice's law. Let's see how this law is fulfilled experimentally. A light source is installed onto an optical bench. Let's put a polarizer next to it. Next comes an analyzer connected to a rotary motion sensor. And the last in this chain is a light sensor. We will rotate the analyzer and see how the light sensor readings depend on the angle of rotation. And of course, the experiment must be done in the dark to eliminate extraneous light. Here's how the light sensor reading depends on the angle of rotation. Maxima are reached when the axes of both polarizers are parallel. Minima when they are crossed. At minima, the illuminance does not drop to zero, because the polarizers are not perfect. Let's replace the angle with the square of its cosine. This dependence is linear with good accuracy. Thus, Malice's law is satisfied even when adjusted for the imperfection of Polaroids. And finally, let's do another amazingly beautiful experiment. As a source of polarized light, we will again use the computer screen. We put said square made of transparent plastic in front of it. Now let's look at it through the second polarizer. The result is amazing. The transparent ruler is colored with rainbow colors.
this method of observation also makes a CD box look very colorful. This amazing phenomenon is called photoelasticity. Colored stripes that appear when viewed through polarizing filters allow you to see the internal stress of the material that emerged during the solidification of the plastic from the molten state.